Welcome. I wanted to talk about a relay, but this specific relay. They call this the ice cube relay, and the people call it that mainly because it looks like an ice cube. But regardless, they work just like most other relays. There really, there's not much difference between them. But first, let's uh, talk about this. We know that we can have a switch like this. This would be basically what they call common. They call this common because this is where power is going to be going in. This one here is going to be your normally open because it is always open. Up here on top, this will be your normally closed because that one is always closed. It's closed until you put power to it, until you activate the switch. Then we can have another one like this. And with this one, it will be the same thing. This is where power will be coming in. So this would be like your common. This would be your normally open. This other one would be your normally closed right there. Until you activate the switch, it's going to stay closed here and open right there. The other thing we can do is we can have another switch here, just like the other one. Power coming in here and this would be your normally open. If we had one here, this would be your normally closed. So once you activate all of these, then they would all switch positions. One thing that we could do is we could add, we could add a coil right here. Now this coil could be, let's say for example, 24 volts. So now all of these are going to be what they call mechanically connected to that coil. You put power to this coil, all of these are going to switch positions at the exact same time. Now, the ice cube relay, let's talk about that one. We have, on that one, when we look at, when we look at the end of it, when we look at the, the end where the wires go hooked up, then we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine connections. There are also two other connections down here at the bottom, like this, one here and then one here. So that's basically what you're gonna have in your relay. This is going to be all encased like this. But what tends to happen here is that we can have on this relay, if you look at the side, if you look at the side of the relay, what happens is you have a connection on it like this. You have a connection here, you have a connection here, you have a connection here. But as we look at the side, we see that from this connection, there's a little wire that comes out like this, and it goes to this little metal piece. This metal piece has a set of contacts like this. So this would be like your common right there. This up here would be your normally closed. And this other one here, that would be your normally open. So we have the three connections right there. This is your common here and here. That's where power will go in. That little wire is gonna take it up to this one where it's going to be normally closed. And then this one here is normally open like this because what's going to happen is down here at the bottom, we're going to have, we're going to have a coil. Now we have a connection here and all it is is just a coil like this. It's just a wound up coil. And once we put, let's say like on that example, we put 24 volts to this, then this is going to reach up here and pull this down. Once it pulls this down, then we're going to make contact between this contact here and that contact there. Once that happens, it's just like taking this and moving it down like this. We have made contact from the normally closed, from common and normally closed, down to common and normally open. That's what's going to happen on the relay. but. When we look at this other picture of the relay, we see that we have three different circuits, just like here. We have one, two, three different circuits. Now, we, if we wanted to, we could run 
24 volts through this one, 110 through this one, and let's say 220 volts through that one. When we put 24 volts to the coil, then the coil will energize and it will pull all of these down. So in other words, our coil is going to be basically right here. That would be 24 volts, 24 volt connection right there. Now, on this, when we look at the picture, we see that this is labeled one, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. This one here would be A and B. Typically, A and B are going to be the connections for the coil. So we look for A and B, and that's where our coil is going to be. Now, like we said before, we have one, two, and three, because this is going to be circuit number one, this is going to be circuit number two, and this one is going to be circuit number three. So we have three different circuits on there. If we look at this one, we said that the common would be right here. So this, all of these right here would be common right there. Well, when we look at this drawing, we see that the top one, it says normally closed. So all of the top ones here will be normally closed. So it will be from seven to one, that's gonna be normally closed. From eight to two is normally closed. From nine to three, that's normally closed. That tells me that when we think about this, it is going to be normally open between seven and four. Between eight and five is going to be normally open. Between nine and six is gonna be normally open. Once we put power to this, the contacts will make and it will switch power from seven. It, instead of sending it to one, it's gonna send it out on four. At the same time, from eight instead of two, two is gonna send it out on five. Same thing again here, from nine instead of going out on three, is gonna be going out on six. Once we disconnect the the coil, once we take power, when we de-energize the coil, then it goes back to its normal position. Now remember, normal is when it's sitting there, not being used, not, it doesn't have any wires hooked up to it. That's why between this one and this one, it would be normally closed. This one and this one normally closed, this one and this one normally closed. Between this one and this one normally open, here and here, normally open, here and here, it would be normally open. So this is about your, your ice cube relay. Now the other thing I wanted to point out is that if you look at the relay, we see that it has some writing on it. Now on this one, it's kind of worn, it's kind of hard to see, but on here, it's gonna tell you how much amperage and how much voltage you can put through each one of these contacts. It's gonna say at you know 110 volts, you can put these many amps through here or to 20, you can put these many. It's also gonna tell you what the coil voltage is. It's very important because if you put the wrong coil in there, one, you could burn it up, or two, it may just not energize, may not do anything. So this is the ice cube relay, and this is basically how it works. These are the connections to them. Now, one of these days, what might happen is you run into these, and let's say that you only have seven and one. You don't have a four. You don't have a four, five, and six. So this would, th that relay means that it would only be for normally closed. You could only turn something off for this circuit, this circuit, or that circuit. Now, if let's say, for example, you had a connection between seven and, and four, it would be only so that you can turn it on to turn something on. Now, I like these right here because with these, I can do anything I want. I can turn something off and turn it on. And I can do it for three different things. Now this is your ice cube relay. I hope this helped. I hope it, this helped you understand and hopefully make your job a little easier. Again, my name is Julio, Aircon Academy. 
please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Eric Khan Academy, and follow me on Facebook. If you have any suggestions for other videos, please let me know, send them to me, and I will see what I can do about getting them on. Thank you.